I greet you in that wonderful day, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has made it possible for you and I to worship again for another message from the Word of God. Amen. If you turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8, and also Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. That's Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8. And also Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. The word of the Lord reads on this wise. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. Yes. He will not fail thee. Amen. Neither forsake thee. Amen. Fear not. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. Hallelujah. I want to read that one more time. And the Lord he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. Amen. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. I will never leave thee nor for safety. I want you to repeat the message today and say, with Christ, with Christ you're never, you're never alone. alone. Yeah. Now say, never alone. Never alone. Never alone. Never alone. Never with Christ, Christ, you're never, never alone. It is true in life we have a term that we call separation anxiety. It's what the children go through when they are taken away from their parents or taken away from their loved ones for even a short period of time. Because of that bond that they have created, the bond of security, protection, when they feel that they are taken out of that security, they have what you call separation anxiety because they long to be under that protection, yeah. Yeah. under that security. And so when you are taken out of that comfort zone of security, it is true, you feel alone, you feel separated. And so the Lord wants us to know today that you are safe in his arms. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. How many believe you're safe in God's arms? Yes. You're safe and you feel protected. Mm -hmm. And what he wants us to know today, that we will never be taken out of his arms. That's right. We can yeah. never. Satan can never pluck us out of the arms of God. Amen. And so he says you can rest assured yes, right. that you will never have to face separation anxiety when it comes to Jesus Christ. Amen. How do you believe that today? You will never have to face that you've been snatched out of the arms of God. Because he said, I will never leave you. So you said, Pastor, why is it important that you have to remind us of that? Because although Jesus Christ is in this ear telling you that he'll never leave you, there's another still small voice in this ear that's the enemy telling you, oh, where is that God? You're all by yourself. That's the enemy in this ear saying, Where's God now? Mm -hmm. 
And Jesus is on here saying, I'll never leave you. But in this year, you hear the enemy saying, where is that God? And every now and then, the Lord does things to remind you, I'm right here. Uh, he sends a miracle to let you know, I'm right here. He sends a message to let you know, I'm right here. Tells you, don't listen to the enemy. Uh, don't pay attention to that noise that the enemy is trying to tell you that God is not there. He wants you to know late in the midnight hour when nobody else is around, late in the midnight hour when all you have is yourself, worried about the pain, worried about the crisis, the Lord said, I'm right here. Clap your hands of God, praise the glory in the house of God. going to go through certain situations in life that will be cumbersome. Amen. Amen. The Lord didn't promise us it's going to be easy. Amen. In fact, I mentioned this some time ago, he said many are the afflictions Amen. of the righteous. Amen. We're going to go through things, my wife and I was talking about this the other day, sometimes you feel like you, with the moment you come out of one problem, you run into another. I've never felt that way. The moment God brings you out of one situation, here comes another one. But after every test, after every trial, you get one step closer to God. He said, each victory will help you another one to win. Some folks look at challenges and they go the other way. But when I look at a challenge, I say, if you did it before, you can do it again. If you brought me out of that one, you can bring me out of the next one. Each victory will help some other to win. Oftentimes in life, we try to answer the question, why? Why, Lord? Why do I have to go through this? Have you ever asked that question? Why, Lord? And can I remind you that there are some answers that you will never have until you get to go away. There are some things that we will never have the answer to until we see Jesus for ourselves. Amen. And so the Lord says, trust me anyway. Amen. You don't have the answer, but I trust you anyway. The old folks who are singing songs say, I trust in God. Amen. I trust in God. You have to make a resolve that I trust God. How do you trust God today? I trust God. It doesn't matter. I trust God. The Lord says that I will never leave you. Amen. Yes, Lord. And in our quest for companionship, in our quest for relationship, it cannot be solely based upon human form. Amen. I, I love my wife. Amen. I enjoy the relationship with my wife. But we cannot have our relationship just based upon human touch. Amen. There must be a God touch. A spiritual touch. We cannot base our only relationship on each other. And I love the membership of this church. I love the love that I feel with the membership of this church. We got to praise the house. Must speak beyond each other. Amen. We need to have a strong connection with God because sometimes man will fail you, man will disappoint you, man will leave you sometimes. But the Lord said, Because I am the one who created you, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, I'll be right there for you. Hallelujah. Some folks who they'll call asking for prayer three o'clock in the morning and they live across town. I may not be able to get there, but the Lord can get there. Amen. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God can get there when you can show. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to cover four points and then I'll let you go. 
He will not leave you, number one, to yourself. Amen. To depend upon your own abilities. He's not going to leave you to yourself. That's the first point. He will not leave you to yourself. Because the reality is, you can't accomplish it by yourself.
Someone shout, I'm strong. I'm strong. Strong. Yes, Lord. Amen. Number three, he would not leave us to depend upon our own wisdom. He would not leave us to depend upon our own intellect. Man's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is limited. Amen. But wisdom that comes from God is unlimited. We can have wisdom to a certain level, but when we depend on God's wisdom, he said, if any man lack wisdom, let him what? Ask of God. Amen. We can go into the textbooks and get wisdom, but when we ask of God, oh, hallelujah. You talk about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding when it comes from God. Amen. We can move mountains. Amen. When it comes from God, Amen. there's an ingenuity that comes inside the life of a child of God when it comes from God. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Amen. And he shall direct your path. Yeah. He's not dependent upon you but to chart your own course in life. Amen. We'll make a mistake. Amen. Amen. If we depend upon our own selves to say which career, which where we're going to live, where we're going to worship, we'll make a mistake. But if you depend on God, Lord, what should I do? What church should I go to? Lord, what should I do? If you depend upon God. Amen. That's how I live my entire life. Lord, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to say? Because wisdom comes from God. And because he promised never to leave you, he's not going to leave you to, 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 to lie upon your own wisdom. Lie upon the wisdom of God. Amen. And number four, we'll close with this. He will not allow you to be deceived by the enemy. Amen. Because Satan is trying to deceive us, saints. He's trying to deceive the child of God. And he doesn't show himself. He disguised himself. Because if you see him, you, you'll be more aware of his tactics. Amen. The Bible says that we ought to be aware of Satan's devices. Amen. And so the enemy tries to disguise himself in order to defeat the child of God. Amen. But the Lord said that he would not allow us to depend upon our own selves so that we might be deceived by the enemy. Amen. And there are some friends that are your enemies. Amen. Uh, there are some people who uh, they claim to be your friend. Amen. That's just to get close to you. Amen. They're called frenemies. Yeah, that, that friend and enemy put together, that's a friend of me. Amen. And, and, and the reason why they can use the term friend to get close to you because the closer they get, they, they, they can stab you in the back. Amen. You got to keep your eyes open. What was that term to say? Keep your, 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 your friends close, but your enemies closer. Amen. You know why they say keep your enemies closer? So you can watch them. Amen. I mean, right. uh, keep, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. You can keep your eyes on them. What I want you to know is that Christ will not allow you to be deceived by the enemy because what he gives you is that, watch this, he gives you the spirit of discernment. So where the enemy is camouflaged, he don't know that you have one. He doesn't know you have a secret weapon. The secret weapon is the spirit of discernment. And what that is, you can see beyond the camouflage. You can see the enemy while he's sitting next to you. He's trying to deceive you. He's talking about you behind your back. But because you have the spirit of discernment, you can see right through him. The Bible talks about the wolf that comes in sheep's clothing. He disguises himself as somebody who's your best friend. But really what he's after is your joy. The enemy is after your praise. He don't want you praising God the way you do. He's after 
your hallelujah because he knows that hallelujah is the highest praise. And so he's after your hallelujah. But you don't have to give up your hallelujah. Don't you give up your praise. Don't you give up your thank you, Jesus. Because all the things that you've been through, you can afford to give up your thank you, Jesus. When you walk inside these doors, I don't care what you've been through past week. I don't care what you've been through last night. When you walk inside these doors, God deserves a hallelujah. He deserves a thank you, Jesus. He deserves a Lord, I love you. I don't care what I've been through. You've still been good. The pain in my body, you've still been good. So I say hallelujah right now. I don't care what you're going through, say hallelujah right now. The enemy trying to stop your praise. The enemy trying to stop you from saying thank you, Jesus. Because it hurts too bad. But I don't care how bad it hurts you. Still say hallelujah. Because God is looking for somebody who can praise him in spite of the pain. God is looking for somebody who can say thank you, Jesus, when things are not going well. Anybody can say thank you, Jesus, with money in your pocket. Anybody can say thank you, Jesus, with everybody patting you on the back. But how about the time when things are not going well? How about the time when you're sick in your body? How about the time when pain is all around you? Can you still say, Lord, I love you? Can you still say, Lord, I thank you? When the doctor's giving up on you, can you still say, thank you, Jesus? When the doctor said it can't be done, anybody can still say, hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. There, we find a friend in Jesus. How we know there's a friend in Jesus? There are old folks in the Psalms, in the Psalms of theirs, not a friend. Like the Holy Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No one else can heal all our soul diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide us till the day is done. They have got a friend like the Holy Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. So much I have a friend in Jesus. Amen. He will not. Leave us to suffer alone. And so he said, Pastor, how about the time when we're in trouble? The Lord says he's a present help in a time of trial. The Lord wants me to remind somebody today that he will never leave you. With Christ, we are never 